Trey be dipping in the building. You know what time it is. So, uh, this is part two of the 600 plus Turbo F20B build. You feel me? Hey. So anyway, uh, if you guys watched my last video, I basically uh, started the build by breaking down my old block so I can use the head um, and the crank. Good. So with that being said, today we're gonna actually start the build. You feel me? So, um, uh, so this is what I've gotten to so far. Basically, I've got the block, the new CSS block already on the stand and um, what I've actually been doing is filing the piston rings down so I'm gonna break down what that is and what that means for those of you who have never heard of it before um, and like I said you guys gonna be along for the ride so yeah stay tuned alright so when you are assembling a motor as far as the pistons um, when you buy pistons, I don't know why this thing does not like focusing. Focus, you ugly mother. Um, so yeah, basically back to what I was saying was when you are assembling a motor and you are putting pistons in, um, the pistons come with a few accessories. They come with the rod pins. They come with um, rings. And depending on, I mean, if you're working on the F20B, you're going to have... Uh, technically if you want to be technical you actually get five rings but three of them are for the oil ring um, on the piston and then you have your what they call the top ring and second ring so if you look very closely you'll see that I already have done uh, cylinder one two and three they're done they're they're gapped so um, basically what you have to do is you have to take well, when you open your box it should look similar to this and like I said technically you'll have five rings in there but three of them um, make one uh, section of the oil ring on the piston so um, and you will have to kind of go through your instructions to see which one is the top ring and which one is the uh, second ring but in my case I have well, let me uh let me lay this out real alright so in my case I have like I said five rings um, two of the rings there's you're gonna get this like squiggly looking one that's part of the oil ring and this gets sandwiched in between these two thin rings um, so you'll know the difference between your three oil rings and then your top ring and your second ring because these are like if you look at it these are like way thinner than the top ring you can compare it. you can probably even see it on camera this ring is way thicker so that's how you'll be able to tell. These two are really thin. And then, like I said, this basically sandwiches that squiggly one. And don't, 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 I don't know the technical terms. This is my first time. So I'm going with squiggly one. All right. So once you uh, coat the inside of the piston walls with some uh, assembly lube, I, this is the one I'm using. Not say you have to use this one, but um, it's been working so far. So, I mean, it's not a bad choice. Um, so like I said, you want to coat the inside, which I've already done, and you want to take uh, whatever ring you're going to start on. Now, do keep in mind that these two rings, the top and the bottom one, are made out of different materials. And the only reason I, I think that's important is because when you actually get to uh, shaving the ring and actually gapping it, um, the bottom ring, in my case, um, is easier to cut. So if you are basing cutting this one off of this one you're gonna shave a lot more material off of this one than you would the top ring because like I said it's different material and this is stronger than this one so just keep that in mind too um, things like that take your time but um, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the uh, ring in and turn it to the side and just kinda gently put it in there and then you wanna take your piston it doesn't matter which one and you wanna push it down uh, roughly about an inch or so um, then you pull it out and this is where it's gonna get kinda tricky I may have to zoom in so now you're gonna need your filler gauge tool um, this one I'm borrowing this from a friend but you wanna look at your sheet um, that comes with your pistons depending on the size 
the recommendations could be different. So in my case, I don't know if you guys can see that, uh, it actually says the top ring, they recommend uh, 22 thousandths, I think is what that, what that number is. Um, 0 0.022, so 22 thousandths for the top ring. And it says uh, 19 thousandths for the bottom ring. Now, what I'm gonna do in my particular case, just from all the recommendations that I've gotten, I'm actually gonna take this um, up one for each. So I'm actually gonna do 23 thousandths for the top ring and 20 thousandths for the uh, second ring. Um, just because it's more important that you have more space than less space. Because like I said, if those rings heat up and butt together, you're gonna have compression issues and probably detonation issues, especially under you know forced induction. So once you get the ring in there, um, this is going to be kind of hard to show you guys because my lighting's not great and um, I don't know if you're really going to be able to see this on camera, but essentially um, you take your filler gauge and um, once you put it in there, you want to make your initial measurement. More than likely, it's not going to be spot on at all. You're going to have to definitely shave some off, um, but the gap is what you're measuring. So you literally take your filler gauge and the way you measure it is... You try to put the filler gauge in the gap and measure it and see if it fits. Obviously, we haven't done any cutting yet, so it's not going to fit yet. So we're going to take this out. And then we're going to take it to the cutting wheel. So another thing to note before you start cutting, um, usually these rings come with some type of markings or indentation that lets you know what's the top. So on mine, again, I don't know if the camera will pick this up. I don't know why this thing is flashing blue and I don't know what it's doing. Um, it's probably not going to pick it up. But I actually have uh, lettering on the on this side of the uh, the ring. And this basically letting me know this is the top of the ring. So you're going to want to know which one's the top um, before you start cutting. Um, and uh, another thing that I learned and I read up on when you're using this tool, you always want to cut inside. So basically, from out, you want to cut from outside to inside because you don't want any of the burrs going that way. Because if you do, then you have more of a chance of the, the rings actually scratching the wall once they're installed. So keep that in mind too. So you always want to basically come towards the inside when you cut. Now these two pins are like guide pins. So what you do is, um, another thing is too, when you're cutting um, your ring to gap it properly, you only want to shave one side. So I've been doing the left side. So you don't shave both sides. You either you pick a side and you stick to it because one side's already perfectly machined flat and there's no point in trying to do both sides. Um, so what you do is you push the ring up against the guide pins and you turn it to, in my case, I'm gonna push the left side against the wheel and you literally take your time. Um, there's no way to, there's no uh, perfect answer to, oh, it's 20 spins or it's 15 spins or it's two and a half spins. You're just going to literally have to take your time and kind of, you know, go a little bit at a time because you can't put any material back. So keep that in mind. So it's better to do a little bit at a time and measure three, four, five, six times than to cut too much and then you're screwed. So keep that in mind. I've already got uh, piston one, two, and three done. The rings are on, rod is connected to the piston, it's ready to go. So is number two, number three. So I saved the best for last, you know what I'm saying? So basically, you got your rod, you got your wrist pin, you got your piston, you got your upper, your top ring, second ring, and your oil ring, is comprised of three parts. You got the squiggly one, goes in the middle, and is sandwiched by the two thinner ones. So, first thing you're gonna wanna do 
is um, you got these uh, locking pins, right? One goes on each side of the piston. So the first one you want to go ahead and put in. Um, the best way to do this is you put the uh, ring in, push it in a little bit, and then kind of turn it to the side. And you're going to have to finesse this a little bit. It's not easy, but it's not hard either. Once you get the first one in, this the, the rest of them will be, once you get like the technique basically. And you'll know it's in place because you'll hear a snap when the ring actually is in place. You kind of, like I said, kind of finesse it around a little bit. There we go. All right, so what you want to do is once you get it in there, if you need to, rotate it so that the gap is not in the same place as the notch. It's better to be safe than sorry, basically. From what I've researched, the rod has these notches on the inside, uh, right there. One on this side and one on the other side. So from what I've read, those go on the exhaust side of the piston. On the top here, it actually says INT, which is an abbreviation for intake. So I know this is the intake, and then that makes this obviously by default the exhaust side. Line that up. There we go. Cool. And this, the, the second snap ring seems to be way easier than the first one, um, but same technique literally just push it in there and once you hear snap you'll know you got it in the right place heard that so that snapped and uh the other one i pushed in was actually uh kind of clocked right where i needed it to be this one i gotta i gotta move so i'm just using the flathead carefully and just kind of clocking it so that that gap is not where that notch is all right so now the rod is officially connected to the piston. Now I gotta put the rings on. So, in my case, the shiny slash aluminum ring is the top ring. So, put these on. And ring on. Now the oil ring is basically, has three parts. You got this like squiggly one. That one goes in the middle, and these two uh, skinnier ones, thinner ones, basically sandwich this squiggly one in. So when it comes to uh, kind of technique for this one, uh, based on the other ones, it seems like it's easier to put the squiggly one on first. Hey! So I know this has been a long video, but it's, it's informational. Uh, a little less entertainment, a little more informational, which is what you're here for. Uh, that's why you click this video. You want to know how you can build your own 600 plus horsepower F20B. You know what I'm saying? Um, so this has been, well, this is going to be part two of who knows how many parts this is going to be, but um, I definitely want to, you know, give you this content as I'm doing it. So it's fresh in my mind. And um, maybe once I get all the parts out, maybe I'll take all the important stuff and uh, kind of throw it all in one video. Maybe, you know what I mean, chop it up. But um, with that being said, this is definitely the end of part two. So today we basically um, learned how to gap the rings and we learned how to put the pistons together, um, connect the pistons to the rods and put the rings on. So I got all four ready to go and step two or I guess part three will be more or less um, starting the actual assembly process but in order to do that I have to take my uh, crank and my head to the machine shop and let them do their thug thizzle and then we'll be ready for uh, assembly so yeah with that being said I hope you guys enjoyed the video more importantly I hope you learned something uh, if you feel like somebody else has something to learn from this video, share it, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, and uh, hit that thumbs up button, man. 
We are on our way to this 600 plus horsepower build. I'm excited. I know you, hey, I know you're excited. Um, but yeah, if you're new to the channel, you see that right there? Yeah, that's the subscribe button. Go ahead and click that, and I'll see you guys on the next one. The grand opening. I come through and start smoking shit. I'm creeping up while I'm approaching you.